In this video, we're going to talk about model-specific explanations for deep neural networks. We're going to see how these methods can provide insight about the specific function or malfunction of the network. Most of these techniques are visualizations of the trained deep neural network activations and weights. The goal is to give a snapshot of the model associated with a specific decision. The methods that we're going to discuss have been originally developed for convolutional neural networks. Taking as an example computer vision, which is a strong application area for deep learning, we see that networks with more than 200 layers deep have been developed. Such complexity makes these models hard to interpret and trust. For this reason, we're going to see how backpropagation-based techniques visualize gradients with respect to the input, let's say an image, or a time series, an ECG. Backpropagation-based techniques are difficult to interpret specific decisions alone. For this reason, we're going to see how class activation techniques provide a better insight of the deep neural network function with relation to a specific class. Finally, we're going to examine how why did GradCam combines the best of class activation techniques as well as why did backpropagation that visualizes fine-grained details in the image. Visual explanations of deep neural networks make them more transparent and explainable. In fact, model-specific explanations can provide better insight into why a model fails. They can highlight how unexpected predictions have some reasonable explanations. They are also inherently more faithful to the underlying model. They can also identify dataset bias and help improve the generalization of the model. Some of these approaches can help us identify robust deep neural network structures for from weaker options, even when both architectures result in very similar prediction. The question though is, what is a good visual explanation? If we consider image classification, a good visual explanation should be class discriminative, being able, for example, to identify the right class in the image if you are looking for cuts to be able to identify where the cut is located or if you are looking here for a dog to be able to identify the location of the dog in the image and therefore explain the decision of the model. They also need to be high resolution. In order to visualize a deep neural network, it is natural to look into the weights and gradients of a particular neuron. So a way to do this is with backpropagation. We do a forward pass and then we compute the gradient of a particular neuron using backpropagation from a particular outcome all the way to the input features. This provides some idea of the object of interest. However, you can see here that the results are not satisfying. Every pixel influences the neuron via multiple hidden neurons. Therefore, the result we get is neither class discriminative nor a high resolution. The idea behind guided propagation is to focus to the particular features that activate a neuron. Remember that each neuron acts 
like detector for a particular input feature. We are interested in features that activate the neuron and we ignore input features that they suppress the neuron. So, in guided backpropagation, we set all the negative gradients to zero. To implement this, we use a relure layer. We see here an example of the application of guided propagation in our original image. We see that based on which decision we start from, we can have two different maps. One which is the guided backpropagation for the decision made from the model that there is a cut in the image. And we see also the corresponding guided backpropagation map for the, from the model decision that there is a dog located in the figure. We note that with this method, we manage to get a high resolution image and that show us actually saliency features of the objects of interest. What we haven't obtained, though, is a class discriminative explanation. For example, for the decision made for a cat, we see both animals quite clearly visible in the guided propagation map. Class activation mapping has been introduced in order to produce class discriminative explanations for convolutional neural networks. CAM requires an architecture that applies global average pooling to the final convolutional feature maps followed by a single connected layer that produces the predictions. Figure shows a schematic representation of the class activation mapping process. This is taken from the original paper that introduces class activation mapping. We see here that the network architecture consists from a number of convolutional layers the features obtained are fed to a fully connected layer with a softmax activation. Given this simple connectivity structure, we can identify the importance of the image regions by projecting back the weights to the convolutional feature maps, a technique that we call class activation mapping. In this way, we see how the predicted class scores are mapped back to previous convolutional layer to generate the class activation map. And in this way, we see clearly that the CAM highlights the class specific discriminative regions. Let's see how class activation mapping is formulated mathematically. Fk is the function that corresponds to the activation at the location x, y of the k activation unit. The global average pooling it sums those activations over x and y. The class activation map is the dot product of the features produced via the final convolutional layer through the global average pooling process we've seen before, multiplied by the extracted weights of the final layer with relation to the C class. The class activation map has normally resolution that matches the dimensions of the last convolutional layer However, this is upsampled and superimposed on the original input image. Here we see an example 
of class activation mapping and how it compares with guided backpropagation results. CAM is a weekly supervised localization approach which is class discriminative. So we saw that for each of the classes, the method is able to localize the object under interest, either this is a cat or a dog. However, it doesn't produce the high resolution images we've seen with guided backpropagation. And as we saw, it requires to modify the architecture of the convolutional neural network in some cases. So the main characteristics of CAM is that it's a class discriminative local explainability approach. We saw that it can provide post hoc explanations of weakly supervised CNN architectures. And here remember that weakly supervised localization imply that determining an object within an image does not require to provide explicit location annotations in the training dataset. It only depends on whole image labels. CAM modifies the CNN classification architecture and we saw that it relies on a global average pooling directly after the convolutional layer and subsequently a dense layer. In this way, it restricts considerably the architectures that it can be used with. Summarizing, we saw that backpropagation technique can produce high resolution representations. However, they have been criticized that they don't actually provide insight in the decision process of a deep neural network. On the other hand, class activation maps produce class discriminative explanation. They require, though, specific architectures. And for this reason, sometimes, come traits of performance in order to provide local explanations.